Greetings. Hi guys. All right, we're here to settle some scores. In the world of Christianity, there are several verses. We're going to compliment you oh, people first. Okay. Uh, Obama. He has played his cards very close to his chest, and um, we're going to see the United States and Iran because it's a prophecy that Iran will uh, occupy and rebuild the temple and the city of Jerusalem and the walls of Jerusalem. Um, we've had a general, Dempsey, go to Tel Aviv and talk to uh, Yetanahu, told him point blank, we ain't going to war. That's it. Also on the Democrat agenda, they're doing away with the idea of supporting Israel with money. Also coming to the fore is the idea that the Jerusalem is going to be for all people and the liberation of the Palestinians is at hand and uh, they will uh, be paid a reprobation, is that the word? For no, they're compensated, compensated by the international community. By the international community for their suffering under the hands of uh, Israel. And Israel will not be recognised as a nation because it's entirely Zionist Rothschild. Mm. It is out of the picture. Now, why? First off, uh, what these uh, Zionists have been able to do through Babylonian uh, priesthoods right down through the Pharisees, which were the murderers of Jesus, myself. Um, what they've been able to do is convince the um, churches, which is a Gentile because it was Catholic, Rome, um, that the uh, lost sheep that Jesus spoke of, I spoke of, go to the lost sheep. Obviously, they were still around. This is uh, 722 BC that they disappeared. So where were they? They were the Ammonites and the Moabites and the ten northern tribes that were scattered by the Ninevite um, Assyrian king after Jonas went there, after he was thrown overboard on his way, packing the ships and running off to... Uh, to uh, Tarshish. Hmm? Tarshish. Tarshish, which is Spain. And um, he found out what it was like to disobey God three days in hell. The belly whale story is bullshit, as you know. Uh, he spent three days in hell to see what it was like. So that's the only sign that's going to be given you in the New Testament is the sign of Jonas. So, so what did he do? He went to Nineveh. By the time he got there, the king had already heard and was in sackcloth because he was now convinced that the God of, the, uh, of Judah was in fact uh, coming out of Jerusalem through Jonas for the message to uh, let the people go. And they went on the trade routes, many, many trade routes back to uh, Europe. And um, for example, uh, the Joseph of Arathamea was a tin man from uh, Cornwall. And uh, <clears throat> in Cornwall, the uh, St. Michael uh, is the national saint and he has a um, flag that is black and white. And my beard used to be black and white. Now, um, I say that is because Michael is my angel when I was uh, a young man walking the earth up until the age of 33. Now the old man, myself again, who was the soul of Jesus, has come back and now it's Gabriel. And um, this is your difference between the two. But this leads into something very important. The Holy Ghost uh, didn't become a Holy Ghost. There was no Holy Ghost. There's the Holy Spirit, different thing. There was no Holy Ghost until after the resurrection. The Holy Ghost is you're looking at him. Right? It's the return of the soul, which is Yahweh and Jesus, to the earth. And then over a period of the 69 years that uh, we're up to now, uh, I've been battling the world and the uh, bullshit religions. Now, I don't say that you take your Bible uh, your King James Bible and tear it up. And not at all. It's very, very valuable. Because in it you've got the Word of God and you've got the Word of Bullshit and you've got the uh, Illuminati version of it and you've got the uh, Pharisee version of it, Babylonian version of it, all compiled to one, saying that the God of the Old Testament who is uh, inviting people and demanding people to do such things like uh, stone a man to death for picking up sticks and all this bullshit. Doesn't sound like me, does it? Why? Well, as Jesus, I said to you, no one's seen God, no one's heard God. If you're looking at God, you're looking at me. Simple as that. So the, there's only one scholar I've, I've heard of, um, and that was a Greek lady, 
uh, studies at Cambridge, I think. And uh, she came up with the idea that the asher and the groves and all that kind of thing was taken out. Of, well, of course it was. So what was taken out is becomes the blazing light of, of uh, truth. So what uh, Ash is going to do now is talking about uh, uh, the Holy Ghost and then uh, Emmanuel and from the Essene account. Now, we can take the Essene account, but you've got to be very careful. I'm only referring to that is because it's older than the Gospels. But even those have been plagiarised and changed mm. as much as possible. And what we're reading at the moment is the Greek version mm. of an Aramaic, and you can't translate Aramaic into Greek. Sorry. Mm. Can't be done. It's got to be spoken in Aramaic. It's got to be read in Aramaic to get the, the uh, truth of what it's all about. So uh, with that, we will turn the floor over to mm. the sausage. Okay. Thank you, big sausage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. There's Not touching that with a 40 year <laughs> There's several, there's several uh, verses of scripture that uh, Christians hang their hat on, especially when confronted with us saying that Christ has already returned. Oh, he's coming in the clouds for every eye to see and all the rest of it. Uh, I want to address that. There's some um, very logical. I should say body. one thing before we go on, uh, which I mentioned before. If Jesus, uh, we're talking about the parables, right? Nothing is, was said unless it was said in a parable. So. If he said he's coming in a Rolls Royce, it ain't going to be a Rolls Royce. If he said he's coming in an aeroplane, it ain't going to be an aeroplane. If he said he's coming in the clouds, it ain't going to be in the clouds. They all mean things. Now, the clouds means confusion. What do you got in the world today? Total confusion. So, by not going directly to the people um, was uh, something I didn't really want to do because they're all stupid. But out of the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, uploads we've done, and uh, the millions of people that watch us now just Google the name, Brian and Lightning Marshall, put in Nibiru, for example. I've put up about 500 bloody uploads on Nibiru, and you can't get none with my name on it, unless you search Brian Leonard Lightning Marshall Nibiru. Right? Then they'll start to come up. So you've got to say, why are they doing this? Protocol 14 says, we will forbid Christ, thank you very much, meaning... He will be a man, he will be the true king, he'll be this, he'll be that, and we're going to stop him because we know who he is, we know when he's coming, it's in the Great Pyramid, it's in the Mayan calendar, it's in all these ancient monuments, in particular the Great Pyramid. And we're going to read a little bit, or Ash is going to read a little bit, and she will mention a part where it says, uh, it talks about the pyramid. Go. Well, get, get me that one over there for that. This is, okay, just clearing up about the conception, the Immaculate Conception. Um, if Remember, I was there at the time. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, uh, it was Rome who invented the fantasy of the Immaculate Conception being there was no man that touched Mary. That is total bullshit. It was all to remove the uh, link to the genetic bloodline of David, the root of Jesse. David was from the root of Jesse. Does everybody know what a root is? Hello? We in Australia and New Zealand? <laughs> are you talking to the world? I'm talking to the world. Oh, the good. root Go of ahead. Jesse is uh, 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 the product of the root of Jesse had with his wife was David. Do you get it? <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> that's just being really, really... <laughs> well, you jumped a few hurdles there, but hey. <laughs> so let's just clear that up. All right. Here we, now, this is... All right, now in the sixth month, the angel... The comforter is the Holy Ghost, okay? Why? Well, you <laughs> measure from where I was born to the South Pole, it's the comforter in Greek. If you measure from where I was actually in the maternity ward, it is God. Hello? Then if you measure from a solar eclipse that happened 14 days later, Father, Abba, <laughs> right. It's eight 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 point eight eight miles, which is Jesus Honey, and Greek. Skipping oh, right along, you're confusing everybody because we start up somewhere. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Well, that's stupid. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel. So it, it, it's Gabriel who looks exactly like Yahweh. Okay, this is still from the heavenly realm. Was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, Joseph was a just and rational mind, rational mind. They and came all the way from bloody uh, England to, to pull this off, you know. Right? So when they show up there, 
because Joseph of Arathamea was going back and forth all the time in his ships, the richest man in the area, or forever that man, enormous wealth. And uh, I spent many years in Glastonbury. And I wasn't going to India, that was my brother. He went to India. Honey, you're not even born yet. According to the script. A little bit later. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> and Mary was a tender and discerning soul, and she wrought vows for the temple, and they were both pure before God, and of them both was Je- Jesse Maria, who is called the Christ. Now, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail Mary, thou art highly favoured, for the mother of God is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed be the fruit of thy womb. Major room. point you're missing there? The mother of God? The mother of God. Hello? Well, yes. there's only one God. That's right. God and Jesus. Jesus is God. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. seen God, you've seen me. Yeah, yeah. Honey. Go for it, go for it. All right. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with I'd like to point God. out that the <laughs> stenographer went out and had a leak at the time and didn't quite get it right and just ad lib when it came yeah, back. Yeah, totally. You're right, yeah. And behold, that moment, moment. is bloody Joseph asleep, right? <laughs> he wakes him we up. We haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet, Pat. He's oh. giving ahead again. He's confusing everybody. Yeah, but I mean, who's the stenographer? You're being cloudy. You're, cloud. shit you're being the cloudy Jesus, okay? You're confusing everybody. All oh, right. And thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a child, and he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no here. end. House of David and the root of Jesse. Two different things. Carry on. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, Listen, the Holy Spirit shall come upon Joseph thy spouse. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, Mary. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Christ, the child of God. And his name on earth shall be called Jesu Maria, for he shall save the people from their sins, whosoever shall repent and obey his law. Therefore you shall eat no flesh, nor drink strong drink, for the child shall be consecrated unto God from its mother's womb, and neither Nazarene. flesh nor strong drink shall he take, Essenes, nor yeah. shall razor touch his head. Okay. And then it talks about Elizabeth. Now, in the, now, this thing. And in the same day, the angel Gabriel appeared unto Joseph in a dream, and said unto him, Hail, Joseph, thou art highly favoured, for the fatherhood of God is with thee. Blessed thou art among men, and blessed be the fruit of thy loins. And Joseph thought upon these words. He was troubled, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, Fear not, Joseph, thou son of David, for thou hast been found favour with God, and behold, thou shalt, thou shalt beget a child, and shalt call his name Jesse Maria, for he shall save people from the sins. Moving right along. Wait on. You can... Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was written in the prophets saying Behold a maiden, virgin, maiden shall conceive and be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God within us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel had bidden him, and he went in unto Mary, his espoused bride, and she conceived in her womb the Holy One. Okay. So it was a natural conception. The Holy Spirit upon Joseph inside of Mary shot forth the root of Joseph and Mary Shot forth, guess you, Maria, Emmanuel. Okay, so that cleared that little misnomer up about a virgin not having known a man conceiving. I wouldn't have quite said it that way. Well, anyway, moving right along. Let's, get, let's skip through to the end of the text where we're talking about the cloudy Jesus. What's happened? Okay, he's fulfilled his ministry. He's, you know, been teaching. And, and we covered everyone? No, not yet. 
at the end of the script, you've, you, you've got the ascension, where 522 people were gathered together. 522 is Emma, the mother, and they see him taken up in a cloud. Now, you've got a couple of angels standing by as, as the men are looking up in the clouds, and, and, and the angels are saying, yeah, I know that, but the angels are saying to the men, you know, why are you looking up? In other words, get your eyes out of the clouds and back to the ground, for the, the way that he went is the way that he will return. Now, everybody in the Christian world, and it has been played out, taken great advantage of by the, the manipulators of the script, say, well, that's in the clouds. That's how he went. No, he came as a man the first time, and he went as a man who was taken up in a cloud. So that's the way he will return, as a man, through the womb. Natural conception between God once again, Godly royalty. Yes, the two most royal people on the earth. Now, if you were made in my image, <laughs> um, was you not a glint in your father's eye? <laughs> Is it a twinkling? Twinkling? Hmm? Twinkling? Or a glint? A twinkie. Okay. Twinkling. Twinkling. You know, twinkle, twinkle, mm -hmm. little star. Mm -hmm. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. No, all right, let's get that. Moving right along. The name. All right. His name, Jesus, Yahshua, Yahweh. All right, the Christian world, a lot of people already know those names. So by the time we get down to John, who was by this time a very old man, and it was in the year 96 AD, on the 96th day of the year, because remember it's all about the numbers, and the 96th day of the year is April the 6th, the resurrection, that's Australian time, the anniversary of the resurrection. So it was 63 years earlier, in 33 AD. Why do you think they brought down the Twin Towers on uh, September the 11th? Because that was your conception date, right? Exactly. In 3 BC. Okay. They built the Pentagon. Spade County <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> Same date. 1946. Oh, my... Something like that, wasn't it? Apple concentrate in soda water. Mm. 60 years before mm. it, anyway, whatever it was. Okay, you're confusing people again. Okay. You're being all cloudy again. There's count. Yeah. Cloudy again. Because I want to explain about the name. I have written this so oh. many times. All right. The Revelation, chapter 3, verse 12. Can we bring that up on here? Can you get okay, that for me? Revelation, chapter 3, verse 12. Ah! Uh oh. Verse, yeah. Revelation. There it is. And 312 is a very interesting number. Well, well, don't say anything yet because I'm explaining it. That's why we've got to read it first. Otherwise you spoil and steal the punchline. Okay. All right. This is what it says. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Now remember, this is the revelation was given to John. John didn't think it up. It was the angel of Jesus, Michael, the archangel, who was sent by Jesus, who's in the heavenly realm, sends Michael, who looks just like he did, the 33-year-old dude who was cut off. And he fronts up and scares the living daylights out of uh, John, who's been in exile on the Isle of Patmos, and he falls down to worship him. He says, get up, you know, like I'm just a fellow servant. Because he thought he was the Lord, because he looks exactly like him. But it was Michael, the archangel. So when he says, him that overcometh, will I make a pillar? What are you doing, babe? Nothing. Oh. In the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Alright, so this is Jesus speaking via, the message came from Jesus via Michael the Archangel who looked exactly like Jesus to John on the Isle of Patmos. And he's saying, the message is, and I will write, so the ones that overcome, they'll make a, 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 a pillow of the temple of my God. And I will write upon him my new name. So this is Jesus speaking. He's not, he's coming, but he's going to have a new name. Now, it's Revelation 3, 12. 
Brian Leonard, Go Lightly Marshall, has an English gematria that adds up to 312. So the verse itself is a clue, 312. The gematria of his name. Brian 44, Leonard 69, Go Lightly 115, and Marshall 84, which is the same gematria as Emmanuel, God within us, all adds up to 312. So that's just one little clue. So it has a new name. Alright, now over to the Revelation. Honey, can you find me 1912, please? Revelation. Revelation 1912. Okay, now remember, it's all symbolic. John, <gasps> seeing all of this, and he's to write it down. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Pissed off. And on his head were many crowns. But you would expect God to be, wouldn't you? The King of Kings. Pretty easy. Right, every king wears a crown, but he's the king of kings. So there's got all the crown, right? a lot yeah, of crowns yeah. on his yeah. head. Melt okay. down if he's Somalia or something. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Okay, talking now, where's it written? In there? Good. Continuing, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Okay, what the story then? No. Well, Jesus Maria. Wherefore art thou read in thine apparel? Isaiah. William Shakespeare. Isaiah. He says in Romeo and Juliet, Jesus Maria. There's your clue. He was known to be able to speak Aramaic and read it. And therefore, he was able to encode. As they changed the manuscript handed to them by the homosexual Francis Bacon and the Freemasons had it, all, had it all set up, ready to go, he was able to write in and identify, wherefore art thou, as in Romeo and Juliet, and you read right through that till you hit Jesu Maria. Hello, what is Jesu Maria? No one knew what Jesu Maria was in those days and they still don't. Jesus, son of Mary. You take, you take any scholar that is into uh, William Shakespeare, in particular Romeo and Juliet. They'll know the words backwards, but they know what it bloody means. <clears throat> okay, moving right along here, because, okay, so you've got the best Egyptian blood, and now... Why is it in blood? Isaiah 63, crushing the grapes. Human being. Remember I said the parables? When you say it's a grape, it's a human being, the blood of the grape is the wine. Eat my flesh is not eating my flesh bodily, right? It's eating the word. Look at that, is it? Or... If it says clouds, it ain't fucking clouds. Get it straight. Yeah. And his name, now remember this follows on from verse 12 that says that no man knew but he himself. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called capital T, the capital W word of God, capital G. So the name... The word was made flesh, wasn't it? It's the word of God, just as he was as Jesus. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God, made manifest. So the name, 1912. Now what's 1912? 1912 just happens to be the year that his mother, the most royal woman, Daphne Go Lightly, was born. Not only that, if you go back and reread Chapter, uh, verse 11 and verse 10 before that, you've got 10, 11, 12 of chapter 19. Well, Daphne was born in the 10th month, October, on the 11th day in the year 1912. So it's all about the Word of God, the name written that only he would know. Okay. Now, following on from that... I think that, I know all that, don't I? I mean, you have to be a real moron not know all that. <laughs> I mean, if you read the Bible, these Bible students, if they can't see that, there's something bloody wrong here. Eh? Uh, let, let, let go me back to sleep. All right, now, continuing on, verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white, linen, white and clean. So the armies are the saints. 
they were in the heavenly realm. They were already in the heavenly realm. They all, this is the year 96 AD. So we're talking about the, the disciples, the apostles, the one who believed at that time. It was all done and sorted by the time the revelation was given to John on the Isle of Patmos in the year 96 AD. And by that time it was already so perverted, you had the, the churches throughout Asia Minor, Turkey, all the rest of it, that the Apostle Paul, who was a devil, he was the spearhead of those. So they had already fallen to the devil. So the revelation had to begin. And of course we are living out the revelation now. So his... The I rebirth prefer the date, gold, I think, don't you? Oh. So the rebirth date of the Word of God, whose name is Brian Leonard Gerlantley Marshall, the name that only he would know. So it's not Yahshua, Yeshua, not even Yahweh, not even Jesus. It's none of those that you might have thought, because only he would know. So did I know? No. None of you out there know the name of God. Of the churches know. <laughs> You've got 36,000 opinions on it. <laughs> well, so that's just a couple of three or four verses. There's also the pyramid verse, going back to Matthew. Where, yeah, that one's a good one. Yeah. All right, going back to Matthew 24. Isn't it? No, I mean you the other thing. Oh, 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 okay, well I have to open, open Frank's book. Mm. Or are we going to yeah. go and get Frank? What do you want, Matthew 21, 42? Yeah. Um, in the actual essay, uh, they've changed one word from it, and it says, uh, Jesus saith unto them, Did you never read the scriptures of the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner, which is the Lord's doing and is marvellous in our eyes. Well, head of the corner is like going to France and saying to someone, Any idea where the, uh, and you're in Paris, right? Any idea where the Eiffel Tower is? You're in the shadow of it, right? And some moron will say, No, never heard of it. Shopkeeper. The same thing. It's saying head of the corner. That means it's the capstone of the pyramid. In the Aramaic, it says pyramid. Yeah. The same has become the well, head of the that. pyramid. So right there, the world would have uh, pyramid. We've got to have pyramid. an Egyptian. Oh. What's that? What's the Egyptian? Uh, oh, it's well, no, okay. that bullshit. Yeah. The, uh, the Egyptians are so stupid. Even today, look at that guy who's in charge of the antiquities in Egypt. What a moron that man is. Mm. Huh? Swazi or whatever his name is. A wasi, something like that. Yeah. What a moron! Mm, totally. They must have had a moron competition. They get the greatest idiot of all times. All right, we'll put you in charge of antiquities. Right, they are. They didn't even have the fucking wheel. You know that? The Egyptians. They didn't have the wheel. There's no hieroglyphic showing a wheel. Okay, now like the, just um, the. Nor did they mention the pyramids. All, all of the hieroglyphics that were scribbled onto all these temples and so forth, none of them mentions the pyramids and they've built them. Right? They stay right away from that. In fact, most of your buildings throughout Egypt were built by the same people that built the Great Pyramid and it await, await the Egyptians. They also built Jerusalem. There's a 555 stone underneath the Temple Mount. 555 tons. No? Tons. Mm. And uh, it's even got the block marks inside of it where they had little bits of wood in there so they could carry it. Can you imagine? 555 tonne sitting below the temple. Now the temple itself is the temple of Yahweh because it was rebuilt by the Persians and that's why the Persians are going in. They're not going to mention the Mahdi has been found or Jesus or anything else until they have taken Jerusalem. So we are at a stage now where the Americans, God love them, have finally come good. And that is the uh, generals of the American Army, Air Force, Navy, have not gone along with this bullshit of Netanyahu anymore. They're certainly not going to go along with the Pentagon's original plan to take over seven of the countries of the Middle East to take all their oil. That's finished because we've crossed over the Milky Way galaxy. Now, I'd like to just point out to NASA Harriman, uh, he's got a few things all right. Um, he's still trying to work out the uh, unified theory, which is... Um, uh, Einstein came up with it and he put a, a, a trampoline with a bowling ball in the middle of it and then another little bowling ball around that and that is supposed to be the unified theory. Neither of the men knew that the solar system is moving northward to cross the Milky Way galaxy on the 11th of December 2011. It's already done. 
Time has been shortened, 375 days, because the Catholics, when they set time up, and the Roman Church originally was so stupid, they didn't have a time between, as days, 1 BC and 1 AD. So you count zero, 375 days. Then they changed time on uh, October the 4th. The next day, the 5th became the 15th in 1582, when Pope Gregory the 13 was told by his astronomer priests that certainly time was out from the sundial in the Temple of the Winds, it's called. Now, what's so amazing about this, the Catholic Church today, here's the bastion of Christ himself sitting on the, as custodian of the Pope, right? He's sitting there and, man, what he says goes, that's it, right? Does it give you the cure for AIDS? Does it give you the cure for malaria? Just happen to kill more people with malaria each year. Does it do any of those things that we have been doing? Of course not. Why? He's up the devil. Mm. Where would the devil be when you consider that Christ is not coming back according to the bullshit, like the Jehovah Witness? He's a spirit. Okay. What have they done? They've taken over the world, and where would you find the devil? In man. Catholic Church, the biggest, most powerful organisation. That's why the United States was dominated by Freemasonry and the skull and bones. And you're all dumb enough to elect a bloody skull and bonesman to your president. I've never seen it so stupid in all my life. Well, actually, did, and yeah. you've even got George Bush Jr., yeah. who was a grandson of the Alistair Crowley, the most evil man that's ever lived, apart from uh, the ancestor of Charles, which is, of course, Vlad the Impaler. Wasn't he the son-in-law? Wasn't, wasn't eh? uh, it, it, it's his wife, Barbara Bush's. Yeah, Barbara Bush's father was Alistair Crowley. Yeah, that's right. So son-in-law, not uh, grandson. Son-in-law. Did Alistair Crowley have a daughter? Barbara Bush. Did Barbara Bush have a son? Oh, right, of course. Yeah, sorry, I don't think Barbara Bush was his wife. I take it all back. <laughs> you shoot him up again. <laughs> right. So you elect... I mean, you don't elect nothing in the United States. Come mm. on. Especially once they got into to, uh, electronic counting. Oh, that was it. This is lovely. How many votes would you like, George? All right, carry on. Oh, I was just going to read um, yep. Isaiah. Sure. Yeah, okay. And I say, going back to the uh, time as Jesus, and when the Son of Man cometh, even the Christ of God, they gather together against the Holy One and slay him and cast him out of the vineyard, for they have not wrought the things of the Spirit, but sought their own pleasure and gain, rejecting the Holy Law. Because the Holy Law is the law of love. Had, had they accepted the anointed one, Jesus... Now this is 800 BC, Isaiah is yapping on about this. ...who is the cornerstone and the headstone of the pyramid... Capstone. ...it would have been well with them and the building would have stood even as the temple of God inhabited by the Spirit, verse 13. But the day will come when the law, which they reject, that's the law of love, shall become the headstone. The law of love becomes the headstone. Seen of all. How? YouTube, cyberspace, computers. And they who stumble on it, so it's the, the headstone or the capstone, and they who stumble on it shall be broken. What does that mean? Broken in spirit, contrite, humble. But they who persist in disobedience shall be ground into pieces. So who are we talking about? All the elite, the Zionist, Illuminati. Shall we make mention of the CIA tunnels? Ah! Hmm. What happened there? Ground to powder. Over 100 miles long a piece. And suddenly they have these lovely doors to stop nuclear blasts getting in, but what it also stops is air getting out. And it reached 197 atmospheres. Was it 197? 19.7 atmospheres, 200 and some odd pounds. 290 pounds or something. 14.5 pounds times 19.7, whatever that is. And it blew it out. Now what happens is you could take a rock, and if you were to pressurise it in a, in a little... Uh, pressure chamber, and bring it up to the same atmospheres and then throw it out into the air. You know what happened to it? 
boom, it blows up into dust. All the pressurized air is in between, in between the molecules of the atoms of the rock. So when they opened up the CIA tunnel, what was in there? Dust. That was it. Now it also set off several thousand earthquakes along the Madrid Fault Line on either side. And this course, what you have is the fault line is the Madrid that goes up the Mississippi. As they're pushing together, one slides under the other. But if this is all crumbled to rock by thousands of earthquakes, you've got rock pushing on against gravel. Mm. That's it. No more pressure. And that's what's been happening now, all over the earth, release of pressure. When, when they was trying to set off the um, uh, platform, Deep Horizon, the latitude of the platform is straight around the earth from the largest danger to the United States. And that is... Las Palmas, a 43 kilometre long mountain at a 6,000 feet high and it's already on an incline, something like that. And they're saying that if one of the local earthquakes goes off, they've got this huge crucible filling with water over the centuries and now this huge weight is ready to slide into the drink. So all it's got to do is have a little heat to turn the water to steam underneath where the two rocks and this mountain sits on top of it and she's going to go whoosh into the drink. Now, it just so happens, at the same time, there were 7,000 mini undersea volcanoes formed and that took all the pressure of sliding this into the sea. Now, in, if you go in and have a look inside it, there's seven kilometres underneath and I'll guarantee you it's stuffed with all sorts of explosives ready to go. Why? Because you're already across in the judgment seat on the floor where what we have when we refer to Armageddon and all those kind of things, what is it? It's a judgment, it's a flaw, it's a crushing. It's where the footstool, it comes down, the foot comes down on the footstool and crushes it. That's what's happening now. That is why Obama, when we pointed out that they were going to kill him at Denver, he didn't go in. We had been able to contact Michelle Obama and the children and basically tell them that the father Lucifer. worships worships uh, Lucifer. He's but a not, Satanist. Not only well, that. Big backup. You, your little kids come up to you and you say, Daddy, you, is a man saying you're a Satanist? And he says he's God. What are you going to do? Well, they're going to say, well, <laughs> okay, I am skull and bones. You've got to tell the truth to your kids. So he's got to turn over a new leaf. Yeah. He was going to get burned for sure. Greatest. I mean, Kennedy was, was bad enough. But this is a, an accumulation of a man that's been manipulated, skull and bones, but into the position of the most powerful man on earth. And he had the power to go into Iraq and Afghanistan and start a war with World War Three with uh, Iran if he wanted to. If he was, this is what they thought he was going to do. But suddenly he's backing up. And over the last four years in his term, he's been pulling away from the support of Israel. And finally, when Netanyahu comes to America and he's sitting there in the White House talking to him, there's evil bastard of a thing. You look at the face on Obama. Mm. He's a very intelligent young fella. And he's sort of, you can see, evil, evil prick, he's thinking to himself. Mm. And of course, this is what he's done. He's, he played his cards close to his chest, as I told him to, and now they are forming an alliance with Iran because the prophecies say Iran will take Jerusalem. But if you've got America joining you, and you've got Russia joining you, and you've got the Arab League, it's probably not going to be too much of an argument. And nuclear weapons, by the way, don't work anymore. Mm. You, can't, you can't start a nuclear war. But evil has passed away. Apart from that, it's been a quiet year. Okay, so where are we at now? This last verse 14, this kind of sums it up. For to some of the angels God gave dominion over the course of this world, charging them to rule in wisdom, in justice and in love. But they have neglected the commands of the Most High and rebelled against the good order of God, which is wisdom, justice and love. Thus cruelty and suffering and sorrow have entered the world till the time the Master returns and taketh possession of all things and calleth his servants into account. And that's where we're at right now. The judgment is calling his servants into account. 
Take yeah, well, everybody out there, they're doing all sorts of things and you're getting the spirit is talking to you or imagination is talking to you or, or whatever. You've been beamed in by uh, some bloody microwave up the street. They're doing this big time in England as well. Uh, Dex just arrived back there and he said you can feel it. The buzzing in your head and uh, all sorts of strange people walking around like zombies. Right? So that's what they do. They uh, affect the, uh, the brain in such a way that they can put this information in and your brain can only handle so much thinking at the same time. So when they bombard you with this crap, it can put you over the edge. So uh, we've got people, oh, I'm saying to him, don't worry about it. I've got it handled. Chill out. Relax. Celebrate. Mm. Kick back. Have a beer. Get stoned. Mm. Right? I've already done it. You don't think that God would come to the earth and not have it already figured out? You think they're going to beat me? For God's sake. Come on. Wakey, wakey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything else? That's it. Quite good, wasn't it? Well, we'll see at the Very table. Very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you know, we've got twin shirts now. <laughs> she's got arms like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know. When yeah. she belts me, I'm telling you, she's small, <laughs> but she's strong. What was it? Remember that punch in the gut I gave you? Punch in the gut I gave you. I remember when. Okay. okay. Good night, guys. Is that guys. it? Love you. 41, 15, Any last 16. minute? Uh, no, have fun. You sure? I'll probably think of something tomorrow. <laughs> what was up in the stars the first time I've ever seen you with that oh, time of oh, day? Oh, 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 that's not true. 